Hey everybody, Foxwell here. Back with another guide for dailies. This time we're going to be tackling the Crimson Isle. Now this zone actually came out before uh, Northern Waste and it seems to go a little bit faster maybe. Um, the mobs might be a little bit less difficult to kill. Uh, paradoxically, a lot of them are actually deadlier than a lot of the Northern Waste mobs though. Um, they're actually couple places here that you can get your hand. butt handed to you if you're not very careful. Hard and hit fast. Get hard and hit fast. So once again, uh, you just saw me pick up the Breadcrumb starter quest from Leela Redkill, as well as the Explorer Path Pacific mission right here. And uh, our, our route for uh, the Crimson Isle is a about as intuitive as the route for Northern Waste. Um, we're going to do a little bit more hopping and skipping uh, and going to different zones and not finishing all the quests in the zone before moving on. Uh, just because, once again, as much as it may not make sense, it does um, turn out to be a more efficient progression. Double kill. Now in this first area, the Scarhide zone, there's not a whole lot to worry about aside from the big robots. Those guys right there is one Scar High Tank, that's what they're called. Um, they don't have a whole lot of health, I guess, uh, but they actually can do some legitimate damage with their telegraphs. Uh, and they do have a stun as well, so you don't want to get yourself locked down. I may just pull one up here. So I'm going to save my interrupt for when he starts casting because he's the big bad guy here. Double kill. If he's going to cast. Kill. Which I guess he's not. I love on all the Exile guns how they have this uh, pinup girl on the side of them. <laughs> it's like this, uh, I don't know, Big Bertha kind of character, you know? It's little details like that that I really appreciate about Wildstar. So you just saw me hop up that little rock right there to get to our first uh, beacon that we got to activate. And now we're going to come over here and deactivate our final gun turret. Before moving on. Uh, as far as AoEing here, pretty much anywhere on the Crimson Isle, it's kind of a chore because you have a lot more ranged mobs than you do on Northern Waste. Um, so it's a lot harder to round everybody up. Ooh, careful you don't roll off the edge. Um, for example, right here uh, in the Scarhide camp, you've got not only the Scarhide tanks, but also the Scarhide dead shots. They're little humans with guns, um, which are ranged, and they can be a pain in the neck. Additionally, the Scarhide Deadshots do have a telegraph called uh, Mortar Barrage, where they just start placing random red circles at your location, and uh, that does quite a bit of damage if you're not careful and get out of it. So that's the most dangerous thing you have to look forward here is Scarhide Tanks and Deadshots. Now from here, I'm going to use an Explorer-specific ability uh, for safe fall. But really, any class uh, can use your movement ability right before you hit the ground. So if you're a stalker, you can use pounce. If you're an engineer, you can use urgent withdrawal, uh, and so forth, to negate that damage right there and land right on your second uplink. And this will be our first completed quest for the zone. I reach it. Thank you, Specialist Matthews. Once again, uh, as I said in my Wildstar, uh, my, my uh, Northern Waste dailies video, you want to avoid completing your kill quest if at all possible. Um, because you're going to kill a lot of mobs anyway as you're going about your other business. And um, it, you don't want to have to kill more mobs than you absolutely have to. Now, once you activate that panel, you're going to start a holdout, which is actually pretty tricky. I. Um, if you're not in a decently geared class, it can be kind of difficult. Uh, I've noticed a lot of healers have a lot of problems with this one. Because um, the mobs come out very, very fast. Like, as soon as you kill one, the next wave is already spawned. See? I got lucky there with my uh, moment of opportunity and managed to stun two of those big robots at the same time. But yeah, as you can see, you get no chance whatsoever to rest or regenerate health. Um, which is great for the sake of having no downtime, but if you're not a class with some kind of self-healing or uh, some way to just keep on trucking through those pools, it can get real hairy real fast. Don't be a stranger. So be careful, and you know if you need to, holler out in general chat, find a group. A lot of people are really friendly. Double kill. 
So once you've completed all of your other quests here and you're working on your kill quest, as I'm doing right now, uh, interrupt. Yeah, all right. Double kill. I try to prioritize the scar hide tanks as much as possible. Um, they are the most dangerous mob here, but they also offer the most quest completion per uh, kill. Ah, oh, come on! I interrupted that. Do be careful, uh, there are some environmental hazards around here. You see that little sparking puddle? If I were to step into that, like this, I would get stunned. Uh, it doesn't really do any damage to you, I don't think. Or if it does, not a whole lot. But the worst thing is when you round up a whole bunch of mobs and you're trying to dance around them and you accidentally step into one of those puddles and then they just eat your face. So maintain that situational awareness. And you'll notice as I'm killing these guys, I'm not just going in circles. I am actually making a progression um, out of the camp because our next stop is going to be the underground burrowing machine. Double it looks like kill. it comes from Blackhawk Depths. And we're going to use that to get to Rotter and then move on to our next zone. Alright, all done. So now we can mount up and ride on. I don't think so, Mr. Scarhead Dink. I do really appreciate the Retroblade mount. Uh, for Exiles, it's the only way we can get this particular model, uh, where the it's a motorcycle with one wheel in the front. Um, so it's kind of neat that we can get both the wheel in the front and the wheel in the back, which is the default Granok mount. Poor Dominion players only get one. Per second. Now, Rotter. Oh, oh, shoot. Don't do what I just did and uh, zone in and immediately start killing Rotter. You do need to click on this to pick up the quest. And fortunately, I wasn't too late. But sometimes you'll zone in and find him in, in progress. Don't panic. Just go ahead and pick up the quest and get back to him. What All is right. it, friend? If you're an engineer, I do uh, recommend dismissing your robots before you take this next uh, drill machine to Bloodstone Cavern or Canyon. Because when you pop up, sometimes they'll be dragged right there next to you and they will aggro onto you. So, I'm doing the explore specific quest on the way to the quest hub for this area. But beyond that, you really don't want to aggro anything or kill anything because you could be getting quest credit for it. In general, what you're trying to do is just make a beeline to the little quest zone over here. Which is right around this corner. Can you help a creature such as I? Greetings, esteemed colleagues. So you want to pick up all those quests. There should be four, I think. Uh, and then come back over here. If you see something to click on, go ahead and click on it, like these little drag grills. Uh, help your fellow players out, help kill their mobs. Just remember, shared credit. Although, as you can see, that's what I was talking about. I only got 0% credit for that mob because I only killed him for that last 20%. Then you want to climb up here to this, which is the eastern tower, I believe. See if I know my cardinal directions. Gives you a little countdown that catches on fire. Don't worry, you're actually not going to take any damage if you stay up there past the countdown. It's just for flavor. Yes, that was the Eastern Tower. Alright, so now you want to abruptly drop everything you're doing and move on to the Spider Zone. Um, we are going to complete these drag quests, but these particular Pale Husk drag are spread in two separate camps. And you're going to be coming right past one on one of your later missions. So there's no need to go and take care of all that right now. Now the most dangerous thing out here, even more so than a lot of the mobs, is your enemy faction's camp. I cannot tell you how many times I've just been lollygagging around, cruising around, viewing the sights. I got too close to the Dominion camp, and they just gunned me down like a dog in the streets. Like, 
it's really bad. They will kill you really fast. They have a pretty big aggro range. I'm not sure how bad this is for Dominion players, but right here next to the spider zone, the Dominion camp is directly next to a lot of the spider mobs, and it's very, very easy to get too close and get your face pushed in. So be very cognizant of that. See? Dominion camp is over there with the flags and everything. As you're coming around these ridges, just be on the lookout for that and make sure you're not getting too close to them. So we're going to go ahead and burn the toxic eggs as we look for the toxic empress. She's a prime mob. Now, like Rotter, uh, a lot of classes can solo the toxic empress, but she is a little bit tougher than Rotter. Uh, Rotter is strictly a melee mob, so if you are a ranged class, he's no problem to solo. Uh, the toxic empress, on the other hand, is a ranged mob, so every class has just a hard or difficult time um, killing her as a young class. For me personally, I was not able to do it back when I just had an engineer tank set. I couldn't put out the damage to make it happen. Um, I had to have a decent DPS set and you know, these decent uh, DPS spec. Of course, like Rotter, there's usually a lot of people in the zone that are willing to jump in and help you out. So if you're here alone and you can't solo Empress, um, you can definitely ask for help, but if nobody's responding to your tells, just go ahead and attack her. And Nine times out of ten, before you're finished, uh, someone else will jump in and help you finish her off. So she has three possible spawn locations, and she seems to be in this one right here on the far back side. Go ahead and get on over to her. I like taking her out very early because uh, she does count towards your kill spider credit. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Now watch out for Burrowed Ambush, uh, like I did not just do. <laughs> she's going to place an initial telegraph on you, and then she's going to pop up underneath that, and you have to get out of that second telegraph. Interrupt her if you can, but uh, she's actually got two interrupt armor, which is hard for most classes to break on their own. Um, I could do it, but I'm just not spec right properly for it. And that's essentially all she does, is just a ranged Venom Spit kind of attack, and um, the burrowing thing up underneath you, like that right there. And then that attack where she stuns you and casts Plasma Pincers, but it's very easy to get out of the way and avoid. I hope you're okay. Don't be a stranger. I love Orin. They're so delightful. Always oh, so cheerful. If I could be an engineer or an, I would. Which I've heard that Carbine uh, is interested in making all classes available to all races. Uh, it's just that they didn't have enough time to get all the animations in uh, place before launch. So it might be something we see in the future update. But with that being said, I really do appreciate Memorda. She's pretty cool. I actually like all of the Exile races, um, except for humans. Like, I don't dislike humans, but. It's just hard to get excited about humans in a video game, you know? Um, I'm, I got attracted to Wildstar specifically because it was so over the top and fantastic, and it reminded me so much of Ratchet and Clank. So I'm here for all the intergalactic alien nonsense. But surprisingly, uh, the Granok are really not as popular as I expected them to be, you know? Um, I don't know if Torin just aren't that popular on WoW either, but I expected, like, you know, the big bruiser race to have a lot of people representing it, but they're actually very rare. It seems like everyone I run into is a Mordash or an Orin. And usually if they're male, they're Mordash. If they're female, they're Orin. Which sucks. Not that I'm sexist or anything. So every now and then, as you're uh, setting those eggs on fire, a little Burning Weaver will spawn out of it. Um, he's nothing too much to worry about. Just go ahead and DPS him down. He'll give you credit towards killing toxic spiders. Unfortunately, he doesn't give you that much credit, so he's more of a pain in the neck than anything, but it is what it is. Double kill. Triple kill. And in general, for uh, completing my kill toxic spiders credit, I try to target the... Um, 
kill. Not the AoE groups, the single groups. Because the AoE groups tend to give really poor credit towards you kill completion. Even though you're killing a bunch of them. These guys, Toxic Weavers. That's what I like to go for. Alright. You had me worried for a bit. So with that out of the way, uh, go ahead and hop on any kind of hoverboard mount that you have for this next part. Because we're actually going to go to a little area. It's not exactly a secret area, but it was one that I just wasn't aware of because the starter quest for the zone never take you here. But this is uh, an excellent place to complete two of your Pale Husk dailies. Two of the ones that we kind of skipped there. This is where you're going to um, disarm the body, you know, the booby trap corpses and also tag the skiffs with a targeting laser. And the great thing about this particular area is, once again, not a lot of people know about it. As you can see, uh, it's totally empty right now. So you've got nobody else competing with you for those skiffs and the targeting laser. Which is great because normally there's people fighting all along that one beach trying to get to them. And you're just gonna follow this route right here zipping on your hoverboard so that you can walk over water uh, to all these little islands. And use your laser, disarm a trap. Use your laser, disarm a trap. The laser does have a cooldown on it, so you'll notice that I'll try to always use that first before I go for a body, uh, a booby trap corpse. Because that way the laser cooldown can be wearing off while I'm blowing up these little chuas. There's a race I'm not a big fan of. Like, I love cute, small, fuzzy things. I've got three cats and two dogs. Uh, so, I expected, like, when I first saw the art for Chua, I was going to be like, oh my god, you know, that's the closest thing to Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank. I'm, I'm totally going to be a Chua. But, um, the homicidal maniac thing just does not do it for me, you know. And I remember I, was, I decided I wanted to try Exile during beta. And one of the very first quests, if you go to Everstar Grove, is where you rescue um, this tree, this augmented tree, right? And he's about to reveal all the secrets to the Elden to you. But before you can say any of that, all of a sudden all these Chuas come flying in and just bomb the shit out of him. And I was, just from that moment on, I could I could not tolerate Chuas. Like, just unnecessarily destructive. But they are still pretty cute. On that note, what is the plural of Chua's? Is it Chua's? Chua? Chewies? Now you do want to be careful, uh, depending on if there's a lot of corpses on the island versus the amount of skiffs. It looks like they're pretty evenly uh, distributed today. You get about one corpse per skiff, so not too much of an issue. But if there's a lot of corpses and you end up taking out that part of the quest first, um, or actually even after you complete this quest, those corpses don't go away. They're part of the environment. Uh, and the only difference is once you complete either that part of the quest or the quest in its entirety, they stop glowing. So it's a lot harder to find them. So I can't tell you how many times I've been out here lollygagging around, just like when I would get shot down by the Dominion NPCs and I would run over a corpse and it would trap me. And the worst thing about it is, if that does happen to you, you get a call from the quest giver calling you like a moron for running into a trap. But it's surprisingly easy to do if you've already done the quest and they're not glowing anymore. So be careful of that. All right, that's the last of the body trap corpse, booby trapped corpses. I don't know really why I want to say body trap for some reason. Please proceed. So with that complete, we're gonna go ahead and skim over to the final zone, which is the uh, the far pale husk camp slash uh, rock canyon. And this is where we're gonna go ahead and clean up all those pale husk quests that we uh, skipped before, and finish up with the rock guys. Unfortunately, the kill pale husk dreg seems to be, like, really imbalanced compared to the amount of other kill quests out here. Like, Double kill. as you can see, I just killed a group and I got 4% credit. Um, 
Now granted, small groups never get as much credit as like killing the big mobs, but still, like you're going to be killing a lot of these. I'm not really sure why they require you to kill so many drag compared to everything else, but uh, you're going to be here for a while. So go ahead and start killing everything you can once you get to this stage. And go ahead and set out the rest of these uh, grills. They do have an AoE around them. It'll knock you back. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, so don't worry about too much. Now, these guys right here, Pale House Devils, um, they are the second most deadly mob, or tied with the uh, tank mobs, as a matter of fact, um, because they have some very damaging telegraphs. Actually, really only one. It's called Angry Swarm. It's a big red circular telegraph, and much like the name implies, it summons an angry swarm of bees who will absolutely melt your health bar. I mean, if you allow that cast to go off and you have me standing in it, you will be dead inside of two seconds. It hurts a lot. So, definitely make sure that you can interrupt that if possible. If not, at least get out of, out of the way as soon as you cast it. Organic Assault, that's not too bad. Um, I think it does a decent amount of damage, but it's it's not as bad as the Angry Swarm. I just interrupt it for the moment of opportunity. Alright, so we're making our way through the camp and killing what we see. I'm trying to go over here to the eastern side of the camp because that's where our holdout position is. Double kill. Which is right here. It looks like I got a friend to do it with me. Now this mission is a little bit interesting uh, because it spawns these scavengers. That's not one to be were actually. Um, but it spawns scavengers who try to pick up these crates and run off with them until they get teleported away, right? Um, as far as I can tell, there's no benefit to saving all the crates. Pretty much you just have to have one crate left at the end of the thing. So once you kill that first scavenger, you can let all the other scavengers get away and you'll still get credit for the quest. You just got to survive. Um, which strikes me as really odd. This seems like a quest that was just asking for, you know, a uh, tiered reward system. Like, if you save three quests, you get more than if, if you save three crates, you get more than if you save one. But, see, he's running off. I'm going to go ahead and let him go with that crate, because it's not going to hurt anything. I'm going to focus on killing mobs right here, like this devil, before we pass that angry storm. And you're done, see? Uh, like I said, just gotta save at least one crate, and you are good to go. And conveniently enough, that leaves you right next to the last tower you need to burn for the Persistent Problems quest. But man, look, we've still only got 35% kill credit on our Killing Drag, which is just like ridiculous to me, you know? I mean, you have to kill a lot of these guys. Howlers are ranged mobs that do mortar barrage. You can think of them a lot like the dead shots from the Scarhide Zone. Um, not too much of a pain aside from just making it difficult to AoE round things up. Triple kill. There my handy dandy trinket came in once again. Alright. Oh, there's a Reaver. He's worth a lot if I can get to him fast enough. Nope, that guy's going to kill him too fast. Okay. So, yeah, for this particular area, the mobs that are worth the most um, kill credit for completion are Reavers and Devils. And I really prefer Reavers because they're melee mobs. Melee is great because you can always group them up for AoE damage. Um, and in addition to that, they don't have any crazy damaging abilities like the Devils do. A lot of times I'll uh, tag a Reaver and just bring him over to another group so I can have a fun fun. Double kill.
Now you can't always predict this, but you want to kind of line things up so that uh, you're finishing out this quest uh, on the eastern side of the camp once again. Because um, that's going to be right next to the rock zone that we're going to next. So once you see yourself start getting about to that 70% level, go ahead and start making your way over to where you did the holdout and uh, try to finish up the kills there. But I still might not uh, calculate this property. Oh, there's that angry swarm that I was telling you about. See? Like, I was just in it for a second, and it took me down past 50%. So, really, really serious stuff. Now you come over here, little reaver. And have ourselves a time. Kill. <sighs> Still only 90%. Ugh. So many pale husks that you gotta kill. Now it's worth noting that uh, you'll find some of these groups that have little pale husk robots and they do give credit towards your kill achievement. Um, but. There's also groups that have little pet scrabs, those little scorpion things, and the scrabs do not give credit. So it's not really worth killing those groups. You really only want to kill um, reavers and devils and then little packs of two drags or a dragon robot. All right. So now that you finally got all of your pale husk killed, I'm gonna go over here and aggro as many of these agrigores as you can. That's a terrible pun. These guys are pretty cool. Um, they have tons, I mean tons of interruptible uh, telegraphs, which is great because you can get a moment of opportunity very easily on them. Make sure you interrupt that ambient absorption if you can. That is a heal. You have tons and tons of time to interrupt it. Um, it starts out with a big red cast, and then it's a heal over time as long as he's channeling it. So it's not too hard to get interrupted on. Uh, as far as I can tell, they only have one really damaging move. Um, it's a wind-up telegraph called like Plasma Strike or something. It puts a field on the ground that does damage over time. It's pretty serious, but it's nowhere near as serious as um, that angry swarm that I was whining about so much in the Pale Husk camp. The only downside to these guys is they are pretty spread out, so that can make it difficult to group them up. Oh, that's the plasma strike I'm talking about. And that's about the only way that it's going to be really bad news is if somebody Double stacks, kill. if you get you know a couple mobs and they stack both on top of each other, which happens to be where you're standing. Huh. Curious what that little green field over there means. I almost wonder if it's Agrigor. Apparently, there is actually a boss over here called Agrigor. These are all shards of Agrigor, as you can see. Um, I have never personally seen him up because apparently he has a crazy spawn time. But uh, I've never seen that green sparkly thing either, so I'm a little afraid to go over there and check it out. I'm going to anyway. So I'm take out these guys. Seems to have aggroed a scorpion. Now, one cool thing about these guys, even though they are spread really far out, um, they are the only. Oh man, lots of red. They are the only aggressive mobs in this area. So, if you need to see where they are on your map, just look for the red dots. Um, any, the scrabs are all yellow, so you don't got to worry about it. So I know there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. No problem. All right, what, what we got going on here? I'm all scared. Anything can happen. Getting up. I have no clue what this uh, big green field is. It's doing for me. Unfortunately, if you don't interrupt the cast of that plasma slam ability, um, you can't interrupt it after it's already filled on the ground. So, snooze, you lose.
One other nice little tidbit about these guys. Uh, this quest is actually not a kill completion quest. It is a collect stuff from the corpses quest. So that means that if this zone is highly populated with other players, um, mob tagging is not as much of an issue. Uh, as long as you touch it, you're going to get credit for looting it. Um, or, like, it's going to drop what you need to loot. Um, as opposed to a kill quest where it's based on how much damage you do to the mob. Ooh, an augmented room fragment. Those are quite pricey on my server. As I said, that's another great reason to do your dailies every day. Uh, in addition to the gold, the elder gems, the reputation for great gear, you also get tons of materials for crafting rune fragments, which is just about the most expensive thing you'll be using in your gear at level 50. And on top of that, you also get uh, plenty of throwaway items that you can salvage for rune crafting materials. Let's see, is there a shard over here? There sure is. So it looks like as soon as we finish uh, all of these shards, we are going to be done for the day. So uh, this is pretty much the route. Um, and once again, like I said in my uh, Northern Waste Dailies video, this is the most efficient route that I personally have encountered. If you can think of a better one or you've had better experience in doing quests in a different order, by all means, let me know. Drop a comment and let me know what you think. And there you have it. You have just completed all of your Crimson Isle dailies for the day. Good job. I'll catch you later.